All right, well, today we have some homework back. So we also have a new cameraman here. <laughs> uh, student filling in. So, uh, and, uh, so I gave, just gave back some homework, and we have a homework assignment due today also. How was it? Couldn't say. Couldn't say? <laughs> when you're assuming the conjuncts, if you have like rigid x equals x, when you assume it, you could substitute in? Yeah. Okay. Yep. If you have rigid x, yeah, that's... Oh, I have okay. If you have, if you have, if the question was, if you have x here, if you have x equals rigid x and whatever, yeah. then, then yeah, you can, this, okay. this, you can substitute. This is one of the conjuncts you can assume, and you can just plug it in. On one of them, the conjuncts was that i equals j. And so when we are assuming it, does it matter which one we use? Doesn't matter. Okay. So yeah, if you have, if you have i equals j, okay. if you want to assume a conjunct, you could either, for i, you can plug in j, or if you're j, you can plug in i, either way. Okay. Yeah. Because this is, this is true, you know, this. Yeah, because of the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, are we good? Mm -hmm. All right, well today, if there's no more questions about the homework, then um, today I don't, I'm not going to, we're not going to look at any equations. So, I mean, you might want to have your equation sheet out, but um, we're not going to prove any theorems, so we don't need to refer to the equation sheet today. We're just going to do, to do more applications, all right? And uh, you remember last time we said there were two problems that we can solve using um, this theory of programs. We could either say given, a pro given the program with the precondition and postcondition, prove that it is correct. In other words, prove that it satisfies um, the specification, all right? Which is the, the specification is the precondition and the postcondition. So given the program, prove it's correct. The other, the other question was, given an unknown on the right-hand side of an assignment statement in, the, in a program statement, solve for that unknown to make the program correct. And those, those are the kinds of problems that we started last time and that we will continue now. Okay, so actually we probably should get the door. Can somebody get the door? No, it's just there are two different problems that we solve. I mean, two different applications of the theory. Are you supposed to do both of them? Well, you can't do both in one problem because because in one problem you, you you're given you're, in one problem you're given the program and you have to prove that it's correct. The other one you're not given the program. There is an unknown in the program and you're solving for it. Okay. Yeah. So it's just it's it's just the classification of the two different kinds of problems that we that we deal with. Okay, so here's, an, here's another example. Let's derive the assignment statement for, for this program. So derive, so this is program derivation. So, it, so here's the program. int x const int a, b, and then the program itself is x equals a times b, and then x gets e, so E is the unknown expression, and the post condition is X equals A times B minus 1. I have a general question. All right. All right, you know how you, every time you've done the examples, you've gone precondition implies the weakest precondition of the post condition? Yeah, that's the definition of the Hoare triple. Yeah, why didn't you do, because P19, which is the proof, that's the like proof technique. That's what we're doing. Yeah. It says to do the precondition with the implies the postcondition with the program statement. Sub textual substitution. The reason it's like that is because our author does not use the WP notation, and he doesn't exp he doesn't explain the weakest precondition the way we do it. So. Because he, he chose not to do that, that's why his, uh, that's just copied right out of the book. Okay, so just to be consistent with the book, that is his recipe. But it's, obviously what we are doing is, is the same thing eventually. 
Yeah. Because we know that the way you calculate the weakest precondition with, uh, with an assignment statement is to do t that textual substitution. So like here, like here what, I, what, I, what I prefer we, we do is we write down what it is that we need to prove. So, so, so if we want, if we want to, to, well, actually, we're not trying to prove anything here. We're trying to solve for E. So I'd like to write down what we have, OK? So in order for this to be, in order for this program to be correct, we must have the following. And here, we'll use the definition of a Hort triple. Is that what P19 is? Yeah, so here what, what we must have then is, is x equals a times b, x equals a times b implies the weakest precondition dot x equals e dot x equals a times. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're right. It is x gets e, not x equals e. This is p19, right? It is, isn't it? Well, the, the, these are all these are all little tiny the details. Right hand side is x equals a times b minus one. Takes a substitution, x gets e. That's what the right hand side. Yeah, is. yeah. That's what the that's what the our, our, our equations show. Right, right. But you know, here again, look. The reason the I just, I, I put that on the equation sheet the way it is is because. I wanted to do to follow exactly the way the book said it, but everything that we're doing is exactly the same thing. The only difference is is that our author of so the book, the author, the author of the, the well, the author of the book does not does not explain this concept of the weakest precondition. So he doesn't develop the theory of programs as extensively as we do. So I would prefer that you do it the way we're doing it on the board with our our program. All right, our process here. <laughs> I would prefer that you do it this way. Okay, so here, so, so basically, and always the way we do this is we assume the conjunct of the antecedent, right? So let's do WP, so let's do WP dot X gets E uh, dot X equals uh, A times B minus 1, all right? So this equals, now what, okay, now what theorem, is it P18, tells us that the way to do this. So P18 tells us that this is, um, what is it? Can you, can you, can you tell me? Shall we do P18 and textual substitution? I'm sure Josh wants to do it. You want to combine these two steps? Sure. <laughs> okay, so this would be what? A times B minus 1. I mean, e. E. Yes. E equals A times B minus 1. Okay. And now what, you guys? Yeah, so this a times b is going to, can be x. So this equals assume conjunct, assume conjunct uh, x equals a times b. So then this will be e equals x minus a, right? So therefore, what is the program? Oops, x minus 1. No, wait, what is it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, what is it? Assume conjunct x equals a times. Oh, yeah. Is it x minus 1? Did I do my... I'm, my notes must be wrong. Hey, watch it, watch it, buddy. <laughs> you have it documented that by <laughs> how many times? A question? Yes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Aha. Uh -huh. Wait, we're assuming the conjunct. Oh, this should be a times paren. Wait. Yeah, this is, yeah. Oh, I didn't know there's parentheses. 
Ah, so my ah, so my notes weren't well. <laughs> I wrote it down wrong. So so this so this is uh, oh no wait wait yeah 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 that's right yeah so this is assume conjunct yeah so ah so this is x minus a right because if we assume the conjunct this is e is a times b minus a and then x is a times b so this is x minus a everybody do that math all right. Okay, so the program is, so, so the program is x equals a times b. The state, a statement is x gets um, x minus a, and then the post condition is x equals a times b minus 1. Okay? Is everybody good with that? All right, now, so let's do another one. Um, this one. Let's do one with rigid variables. Rigid variables, now here's the thing. A rigid variable cannot be used in the program itself, right? So let's make that note. Here's another example. So rigid variables. Correct. Notice th that here that A is a constant, so it can appear because here we have constant int A B, right? Uh -huh. So that's part of the that's that's part of the program. So it's okay to have that in your assignment statement. Yep. But rigid variables cannot. So rigid variables are not declared in the program. Okay. So let's do um, let's so let's solve for solve for E again. Um, well, actually, let's do this. Let's do solve for E and F. Aha, uh -huh. we're going to get a little fancy here. Okay, suppose we have this program. Int X, Y. And for our precondition, we're going to have X equals V plus W. And Y equals V minus W. Okay, so we have one variable is equal to the sum of two quantities, and another variable is equal to the difference of these two of two quantities. Okay, and what we want for the statement, we're going to do x comma y gets e comma f. Okay, so we're going to sum whatever this. And then for the post condition, what we want to have be true is we want x to equal 2 times v and we want y to equal 2 times w. 2 times rigid v and y equals 2 times rigid w. Okay? Now what must we have? So let's write down what we must have. So what must we have? <laughs> okay, so we yes, weakest precondition. Which uh, well, what must imply? Right, right, right. So x equals so x equals v plus w, and y equals. V minus W must imply, must imply what? This, right? On oh, no, a weakest precondition. Implies the post condition. Implies the weakest precondition dot XY gets EF. <laughs> okay, WP, WP, uh, now what is this? WP, XY gets EF, XY gets EF, right? Dot, what? Post condition, right? This, is this right? 
dot. And post condition is going to be x equals 2 times v times v and y equals 2 times w. Okay? Are we good? And just in setting it up? All right. So, yeah, so we'll start with the right hand side and get it to, we'll assume the conjuncts of the antecedent and we'll start with the right hand side, yeah? So we'll do WP dot x comma y gets e comma f, okay, dot x equals 2 times v, 2 times rigid v, and y equals, correct, 2 times rigid w, okay, and this equals by P18 and textual substitution. Uh, so what will that be? E equals two times V and and F. Two times rigid W. Now what? Yeah, so assume what? X equals V plus W. But that how but how what is that? How, yeah, how do we do this though? Because X X is V plus W? How do Well, what do we know? No, she's right. The x is equal to v plus w. You can change v to equal, v just like a w term. Minus w. Yeah, yeah. We have to do some math here. So, so uh, assume conjuncts. Uh, and so, how did you say to do that? If if you add. Assume conjuncts and math. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. So if you so if you add x and y, you get two v, right? V plus w plus v minus w. So what I, I think what I'm saying is that and math. So what we're saying is that is that x plus y equals what? 2v, right? That means e equals x plus y. Equals 2v and x minus y equals what? 2w. 2w? Can we, all right? Are we good? So e equals x plus y. So, so, th so this equals E, uh, sorry, so this equals, E equals X plus Y and F equals what? X minus Y, right? Okay, and that's it. Okay, so the program is, so the program is X equals V plus W and Y equals V minus W and the program itself X is, X plus y is minus yep X Y gets X plus Y X minus Y and the post condition is um, X equals 2 times V and 
y equals 2 times w. Okay? Are we good? Okay, now the next uh, kind of problem that we're going to tackle is, um, is uh, has to do with arrays. Okay, and your homework assignment for Monday, by the way, we have an exam coming up here a week from Monday. Doesn't time fly? Seems like we just got started. Now, actually, this, this next series of, of exercises now, enter in, we, we, we're, gonna, we're, gonna get, we're going to learn a new concept. This is the concept of an invariant. Have you guys heard of invariants before in your programming class? Now, here's what an invariant is in, in uh, a theory of programs. An invariant is a conjunct that appears both in the precondition and the postcondition. Okay? That's why it's called invariant, because it's true before the statements execute and after the statements execute. It's true both times. All right? So, an invariant is a conjunct that appears, a conjunct that appears in both the precondition and the postcondition. All right? That is what an invariant is. And here is our example. Actually, I'll give you a couple of examples. Well, yeah, the size, but that's kind of a trivial one. Uh, there's, uh, yeah. That, but that, 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 that is an invariant. That, that is an invariant. Like if n equals its original value, it equals its final value every time. But here's, uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Um, here's one. This is, uh, we've talked about this before. This is the division algorithm. Suppose we have int q, q y r, int q y r, and so these are the variables. And suppose our precondition is 0 is less than or equal to r, and q times y plus r equals x. Um, and then what we're going to change is Q and R, so Q and R gets question mark. And then in the end, what we're going to have is 0 is less than or equal to R and Q times Y plus R equals X and R is less than Y. All right? Now, let's think about that for a minute. What, um, so can you identify the invariant here? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, or the whole thing, the whole. The entire precondition. Well, not, yeah, you're right, the entire precondition is. And so what we're saying is that this, this is invariant. This is the invariant. All right. So it's a statement that's true. Both in, it's a conjunct that's true in the in the precondition and in the postcondition. You could either say, yeah, I, I suppose you could say, well, zero is less than because r is one invariant, and q times y plus r equals x is another invariant. I mean, you could say, I mean, but we normally just group the whole thing as being the invariant. Okay. But, so that so that's one example of an invariant. Well, the point is, as you go through, it, when we're actually, we're going to, this is, we're going to use this when we take a look at the division algorithm. We're going to prove that the division algorithm is correct. But, but what it does is it, it maintains the fact that, it maintains the fact that x equals q times y plus r. But, but what, but what happens is, um, in the end, r, we, we, we guarantee that r is less than y. So this invariant, this, this is what basically what we want at the end. At the end of our computation, we want this invariant to be true. In other words, we want x to equal q times y plus r. Okay. So, so now here, and let me give you another example. This this next example is an example with um, with uh, an array. And these, it's really this is where 
the concept of an invariant comes in really, really, it's really, really important because uh, you know manipulating manipulating arrays can be very tricky. And I think if you have the concept of an invariant down, it helps you to understand how to write a correct program when you deal with when you deal with arrays. So here's the next example. No, I'm just giving you. I, I, after we do this, after I show you the, another example of this invariant, then we'll do a problem with an invariant in it, and I'll show you how, how it works, how to, how to do how to do that. But for now, I just want to show you what, uh, what an, uh, g give you an example. Now, when you start dealing with arrays, it's really help. You don't. Um, we don't want to have to write the same expression out over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is, at the beginning of this example, we're just going to define P1. <coughs> and P1 is going to be this. X equals the sum on K, 0 less than or equal to K, range 0 less than or equal to K, less than I. And then the body is going to be B sub K. Now, the thing of it is, is that in the course of showing you this example, I would have to write this out a number of times. I don't want to have to write it out the same thing, the same thing over and over. So this is just an abbreviation. Any time down here that I use P1, that's an abbreviation for this. And you can do the same thing. I like abbreviations. You like abbreviations. So what this is doing is this is helping us to minimize writing. <laughs> All right, so I, I figured you'd like this. So let me draw a little picture here. Okay, so suppose we have an array like this, you know, and it has, well, however long. All right, and so this is the B array, okay, so this is B, and this is B sub 0, B sub 1, you know, etc. Okay, and now let's suppose now that our value of i. The current value of i is 3, okay? So here I'm going to put, I'm going to indicate that here. So here we're going to saying i equals 3, okay? And what we're interested in is this part of the array, okay? Now tell me, if i equals 3, what is this x? If i equals 3, what is the value of this? This sigma means what? Is i position or the value? i is this index. Is, uh, okay, oh, here's the first question. Is i bound or free? Free. It's free. Is k bound or free? Bound. It's bound. So tell me, what is the value of x in this? If, if i has the value 3, then what are the possible values of k? A sub 0 plus b sub 1 plus b sub 2. Correct. Are you with me? Is everybody clear on how we do quantification like that? Okay, so what we're saying then is that, is that x is the sum, x is the sum, x is the sum b sub 0 plus b sub 1 plus b sub 2, right? Are you with me? If I mean that's what x that's what x is by def, by this definition, yeah. So i is the index, right? Well, i is this free variable that says that that that, that I, hold, the, 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 the meaning the, the the meaning the meaning of okay i is a free variable, the meaning of which is that x is the sum of b sub zero up up to b sub i minus one, that's what i is. Ah, but this is less than i. No, this is b sub k. This is b sub k. That was my question. All right, so k, k is, the, is the bound variable, is the dummy variable. So the possible values of k here are 0, 1, and 2. So what we're saying is that well, i... i is greater than n. Well, let's, yeah, that would have to be a, pre -con, a precondition and a postcondition. i would have to be less than or equal to n. Or i less than n, rather, right? Be equal to no, actually, it could be. You're right. It could be equal to it because, yeah, actually, you're right. It could be equal to n because then it would be the sum of all the ones up to n. Good point. 
Okay, does everybody understand then what I is? I is a free variable. Okay, so now, here's what we want to do. Suppose you have this situation in a loop. And what you want to do is you want to increase I in such a way to maintain this invariant. Now, does everybody see what we're doing here? So what we want to do is, as we go through a loop, we want to increase I, but the question is, how do we maintain this invariant? In other words, at the end of this loop, at the end of one execution of the body of the loop, we still want x to be the sum on k, 0 less than or equal to k less than i of b sub k. See? So this is an example of an invariant. Let me write that down. We want to increase i by 1. Want to increase. We want. We want to increase. We want to increase i by 1, okay, in such a way as to maintain this invariant. In such a way in such a way as to maintain the invariant. Okay? So this is going to be called a loop invariant. Invariant. So afterwards, what do we want? So here's what do we, what do we want to be afterwards? We want i to be have what value? We want so afterwards we want we want um, i equals four and x to be the sum and x to be the sum. This is going to be the invariant and x to be the sum. Uh, you know, b sub 0 plus b sub 1 plus b sub 2 plus b sub 3. Okay? So now, here's our problem. So here's, here is how, the, how we would write the program with the precondition and postcondition to do this. So what we're going to have is const int n, okay, so n would be the size, the size of the array, okay, so constant int n, and we're going to have int i, x, and b. Int i, x, and we're going to say int b, n, this means b is an array with n elements. It's an array of integers because it's int. Is everybody clear on this? Well, no, by, by putting the brackets here, that says that it's an array. And what we put here is how many elements there are in the array. And the fact that it's an int means that it is an array of integers. We're writing this in GCL. Yes. Oh, yeah, all of this is GCL. All of this. That doesn't look Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's similar to Java. Okay, now, now, comes our, now comes our famous abbreviation. Now, so what's our precondition? Check this out. What's our precondition? P1. I don't want to have to write that all out again. Okay, and now what should what are our statements? Don't we have to have the i less than equal to n? Which yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Let's 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 just assume that. Okay, but but now but now so p one. Okay, so p one. But now what is it that what is it that we want to do in our program? We want to change i and x. Very good. So so what we have is i, comma x gets. Now, i plus 1, we know that we want to do i gets i plus 1, but now what do we want x to get? Well, we don't know for the moment. Well, we don't know. Well, well let's calculate it. Suppose, suppose we don't know. What do you mean, but we don't? Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. I just, I'm just showing you how the technique works. I, I, no, no, hold on. Well, let's, let's, let's have it be unknown. I know you know, but let's have it be unknown and solve for it, okay? Okay, I, I'm doing a simple example. Okay, just to show you how the mechanics works. So, okay, so, so this E, well, let's have this be unknown. And now what's the post condition going to be? One. The same thing. We still want P1 to be true in the post condition. You know, does everybody see what we're going to do here? Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to solve, we're going to derive this program, but we're going to do it in such a way, we're going to put this, this precondition, it's going to be an invariant. We're going to have the same thing true in the post condition, and what we want to do is we want to increase i by 1, and we want to, 
we want to do, do i gets i plus 1, and we want to get x gets something, but suppose we don't know, suppose we can't anticipate what it is, we can actually be, we'll actually be able to derive what it, what it should be. Are you with me? Huh? So tell me, what must we have? So here, let's, so actually, so, and, here, and after we do this, let's, let's say solve for E. Solve for E. So we're doing program derivation, right? So what must we have? E1. E1 implies. Yes. Notice how we don't have to write this out all the time. We can just do P1. Fair <laughs> yeah, I mean, otherwise we'd have to say extra da 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 da. But that's the only one we're working with. Then. So P1, well, you know, P1, I mean, I mean it, it's very useful when you're doing invariance because it's the same thing front is back, and so you don't, yeah. It, it, with invariance, you'd have to write the same thing a lot. So, so what would it be? P1 e implies what? WP dot, mm -hmm. I x gets i plus 1e e dot P1. P1, right? And how do we always do this? Assume the what? Assume the conjuncts of the antecedent, all right? So, uh, so assume conjuncts. All right, so let's do, let's do the computation. So what do we do? We start with this, right? So it's WP dot i comma x gets i plus 1 comma e dot, well, why write it out? P1, right? We know we've got P1 right there in case we need it, right? So now what do we use? So this equals by what? Now what do we always do? What's the always P18 intellectual substitution, right? Are we good? P.18 and textual. <laughs> you want to make up a symbol for this? <laughs> you would want to. <laughs> okay. Now, but now we have to kind of refer. Now we have to refer back to what P1 is, right? Because we're going to do P1. So what do we have to do here? What do we have to do? So what we have to do is we have to we have to. It's it's this whole thing, right? With and everywhere there's a what? Everywhere there is a i, you do what? i plus 1. And everywhere there's a, everywhere there's a x, which is here, you do a what? E. e. So what are we going to have? E equals k less than i plus 1. Okay. So this is going to be e equals, now we're going to have to write it out. So on k range 0 less than or equal to k less, less than i plus 1, less than i plus 1, whatever, body b sub k, all right, and now you guys, and now you guys, split off term, great, you saw it, okay, equals split off term, I forget the number, I, I think we just say split off term, right? <laughs> yeah, you would say, you would say S O, S dot zero O dot, S dot O dot T, SOT. Yeah, you're going to do S O T. I'm sure you, um, I'm sure I'll see S O T. Okay, so now what happens if we split off the term here, right? E equals by split off term what? Now what's this going to be? E equals what? Oh, wait. Yeah, well, yeah, so what will E equal? E will equal what? E equals. Sum on k, what? Zero, zero, less than equal to, uh, zero, zero less than equal to, uh, oh no, you're right, k. Zero less than or equal to k, less than i, less than I body what? B sub k, B sub k plus. right? Plus, now what term got split off? B the, I. B sub i. Right, is that right? Is everybody clear on that? Okay, and now this equals by assume what? By what? By, by what? Yeah, assume P1. Assume conjunct, let's say, assume conjunct P1. Assume, yeah, yeah, assumption, yeah, that's good. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, okay, uh, so, uh, uh, assumption P1. But now what does P1 say? What does P1 say? It says all of this stuff does what? Is X. Is X. So E is what? So E equals X plus B sub I. Well, I know, but it shows you the, it shows you you know that you can do how you can how you can do that. So in a more complicated one, in a more complicated one, it would be you know, but here, but 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 it shows you how that, that you can do this. So what is the finished program? The finished program is well. Well, it shows you that we have an, this invariant, this concept of this invariant. So we have P one. Yeah, we keep using our abbreviation. Yeah, x or i comma x, i comma x gets i plus one comma x plus b sub i, and then post condition p one. Are we good? Excellente. Now, next time we are going to learn how to do, um, how to work with the if statement. We're going to introduce the if statement. So, so far we've done abort. No, so far we've done skip. What are the GCL abort. statements we've done? We've done skip, abort, the assignment statement. Oh, no, um, skip, abort, sequence. So one statement after another one, right? So we've done skip, abort, sequence. The assignment, we spent a lot of time on the assignment statement. Next time will be the if statement. And we'll see how the, we'll see the, de the formal definition of the if statement, which is going to be P.21. All right? Good deal. That's it for today, sports fans. See you next time.